with this NX, Lexus has bought us a strikingly styled premium mid-sized SUV that's unafraid to go its own way when it comes to cars of this kind. It's the only model in this class that can't be ordered in diesel form, with most variants instead offering a beautifully refined and highly efficient petrol-electric hybrid powertrain. If you're choosing in this segment, most of the magazines will tell you to go and buy something diesel-powered and German. But if an NX appeals, you might well feel that you know better. And you could be right. Premium mid-sized SUVs are all the same. Or are they? Here's one that's a little more individual, the Lexus NX. And this improved first generation version deserves your attention. Lexus isn't afraid to be different. It never has been. This was a company that proved top luxury saloons didn't have to be German. And the brand that pioneered hybrid power when others were only just getting to grips with diesel. So when at last in 2014, it turned its attention to the premium mid-sized SUV sector with this NX model, it was perhaps inevitable that its approach would once again be somewhat unique. The looks, for a start, make this arguably the most distinctive design in the segment. Amongst obvious rivals, even a Range Rover Evoque looks quite ordinary in comparison, while popular contenders like Audi's Q5 and the Mercedes GLC look positively mundane. Further setting this car apart is the technology that lies beneath its bonnet. In a class that relies almost exclusively on diesel engines, it's the only model that you can't fuel from the black pump, with all NX variants instead preferring the greener and more tax-efficient solution of petrol-electric hybrid power, albeit without the addition of plug-in technology. The resulting package has worked quite well for Lexus, this model quickly reaching a point where it accounts for over 30% of the brand's global sales. It's a sign of the market's current fascination with SUVs that it outsells the company's cheaper, more conventional CT200H hatch by 3 to 1. Even so, the Japanese maker knows that many potential buyers still aren't aware of this model's existence, and those that are could easily be swayed towards the many and varied premium mid-sized SUVs launched since this car's original introduction. Uh, most recently, contenders like the third-generation BMW X3 and the second-generation Volvo XC60. Hence the need for a mid-term update that's brought us smarter looks, upgraded infotainment, more comprehensive safety provision, and which has supposedly improved the rather over-firm ride that blighted early NX models. The result, for the right kind of buyer, could be an interesting combination. Let's put this car to the test. You might at first think that Lexus has dropped the ball by not offering this NX with the diesel power that dominates this model segment, uh, the premium part of the mid-sized SUV sector. Not so. The Japanese brand thinks that diesel engines have a little bit too much of the 19th century about them. And once you get familiar with this car, the advantages of the petrol-electric hybrid powertrain it prefers instead quickly become apparent. Now next to us here, the uh, office manager has a diesel BMW X3. And on cold mornings, that thing will clatter on startup like a mini digger. Push the starter button here, and the only sound you get in a Lexus NX300H is a soft whir of the steering wheel departing from its raised entry exit position to your preferred memory settings. Uh, the dials will spark into life, and you can then ready yourself to slide away purely on electric power, locking the car into that mode necessary by pressing this EV button down here by the gear stick. Unfortunately, the NX will only run for just over a mile on full electric power before the petrol engine chimes back in to recharge the battery packs, and then only if you keep your speed below 30 miles an hour, which is one of the reasons why most of the time you probably won't bother with the full EV mode, because uh, this Lexus is very clever at figuring out for itself when the electric motor and the petrol engine should work. 
The resulting drive combination is difficult to fault. In fact, in town, there's really no other crossover of this size. It even comes close to the seamless waft of propulsion that this car provides. So if you're looking for the most relaxed and refined mid-sized SUV you can buy for shopping and school run duties, well, you can end your search right here. This is it. It's not perfect, mind. You'll also need to get used to a brake pedal that is neurotically keen on harvesting power back to the hybrid system. As a result, uh, not much more than a touch from your little toe can easily see you standing the NX on its nose until you adjust your foot pressure to suit its demeanor. Uh, you do adapt quickly, though. It's all part of this car's more individual experience. The eCVT Auto gearbox that every hybrid NX model has to have contributes greatly to this Lexus's polished urban demeanour, giving the car a lovely elastic flexibility from standstill and working seamlessly with the electric motor to provide absolutely effortless pickup. Unfortunately, uh, out of town, the belt-driven transmission is far less accommodating. Uh, the gear shift that was so sweet and smooth when you were just ambling about rather loses its way when more rapid progress is called for. Uh, you press the throttle hard, the revs roar, and, well, not a great deal happens. Even without this issue, this petrol-powered NX would still lack the mid-range grunt of its direct 2-litre diesel rivals. As it is, well, let's just say that it certainly doesn't feel as if you've got 195 bhp of power at your disposal. That's the claimed total output of this NX 300H model's 2.5-litre hybrid unit. The feeble 210 Nm torque output figure, that's about half of what you get from a conventional 2-litre diesel-powered rival, confirms that impression, and that explains this less Lexus model's relatively feeble 1,500 kilogram brake towing capacity figure. The sales figures suggest that most NX buyers are quite happy to work around these potential irritations, as we've been perfectly happy to do throughout this test. Get into a hybrid mindset and you'll find this car a uh, quiet and enjoyable means of business transport, but it could be so much more. Hyundai has shown that a conventionally responsive cog-driven auto gearbox can happily work with petrol electric power, and Lexus urgently needs to copy that approach with the next generation version of this car. The other issue the brand has to work on is ride quality. As with the CT200H, this model was originally launched with an over-firm damping setup, reflecting a perceived need for segment sportiness that the brand uh, clearly hadn't properly thought through. As a result, it fidgeted over almost any tarmac surface that wasn't billiard table smooth. So with this revised NX, we were promised that a thorough reassessment of the suspension had been made uh, with spring rates, roll angles and even shock absorber oil seals having been changed in pursuit of the kind of supple ride that luxury orientated Lexus owners commonly want. It has all delivered an improvement, but to be frank, not enough of one. The car is still more frequently unsettled than it should be by speed humps and the scratchy tarmac legacy of shady cable companies, and it crashes through potholes that a rival Audi or Mercedes would just shrug off. Which, if you like the NX as much as we do in so many other respects, is a little frustrating, particularly as Lexus has on hand the technology to solve that problem in the form of its AVS, Adaptive Variable Suspension System. Now, with this active damping setup as part of the package, this car can become a far more likeable thing. The electronics smoothing out bumps and compensating for uneven surfaces, as well as reducing body roll and improving cornering agility. The problem is that in your NX variant of choice, AVS almost certainly won't be part of the package. Even the most expensive premier spec flagship variant that we're trying here doesn't have this setup. And like the other NX variants, it can't be optionally ordered with it. The AVS system only comes as part of an expensive pack of extra cost options on the pricey F-Sport derivative that sits in the next level down in the trim hierarchy. Making AVS optional further down the range would be such an easy fix here. Why can't the company do this? 
So let's move on to something that you can have across the range, uh, the standard drive mode select system that offers you normal, eco and sport modes that uh, tweak throttle response, steering feel and gear shift timings uh, in the way that these drive setting systems usually do. Uh, now in the unlikely event that uh, your NX has AVS, you'll get a Sport Plus mode too. Uh, selecting Sport, which delivers a red tinged set of instruments and which replaces the usual left hand hybrid system system gauge with a rev counter is a requirement if you're going to get anything more than lazy affability from the NX's hybrid powertrain. Having done so, a 62 miles an hour from rest is apparently possible in 9.2 seconds, which is reasonably competitive, uh, and that's on the way to a feeble top speed of 112 miles an hour, which very differently isn't. But then, when was the last time you drove at over 100 miles an hour? The speed stats are the same whether you choose your NX300H in two or four wheel drive form. Uh, Lexus continues to insist on offering buyers the option for a front driven only variant at the foot of the range and that's despite the fact that even the E4 all wheel drive versions power through their front wheels for the vast majority of the time. Here we've got the 4x4 variant that nearly all customers will choose, which brings rear wheel traction to the party when conditions demand it, courtesy of a second electric motor that's solely there to drive the rear axle. It's a setup even less likely to take you very far off road than a conventional mechanical package would on a car of this kind, but for muddy car parks and icy mornings, it'll be quite sufficient for the needs of most potential owners. You might even be fine on light forest tracks thanks to a reasonable 185 mils of ground clearance as provided you don't come across anything too testing on the way. If so, you could find the approach angle uh, just 17.2 degrees and the departure angle uh, only 24.3 degrees somewhat limiting. And you might struggle with the fact that four-wheel drive can't be engaged permanently and the fact that there are no driving aids like hill descent control to help you down tricky inclines. But of course you won't be buying this car expecting to conquer the Serengeti. The four-wheel drive system's purpose is to provide extra tarmac traction and to perhaps allow you to push on a little bit through the bends, should that ever be necessary. Now unfortunately your enthusiasm for using that capability may be somewhat tempered by the preferences of a somewhat over-enthusiastic stability control system that cuts in at the slightest sign of cornering vigour, which is a pity because it disguises a talented chassis that actually has quite large reserves of front end grip. Now this approach may make uh, an NX almost uncrashable on a typical windy road, but it won't endear the Lexus to many of the folk who buy Jaguars and BMWs and might not be too thrilled at this level of non-switchable interference. Still, horses for courses and all that. If, quite understandably, you don't see the point of an SUV that's designed to be thrown about, you'll probably be very pleased at the driving characteristics of this car. It knows its market. Remember when Lexus models tried to look like their competitors? Well, it seems a bit quaint now, doesn't it? Those days are long gone, and in this NX, what we've got instead is one of the most individual designs on offer in the current market. It's styling an absolute riot of contrasting angles, swage lines, and details, all competing for your attention. It has absolutely no right to work, but somehow it just does. Now, we still think it looks great, but styling is, as ever, largely subjective, and you might think it's terrible which of course is completely okay. Go and buy a BMW X3 or an Audi Q5 in this segment if you don't want anyone to ever notice or comment on the car you drive. It's just a case of whether you want to spend as much as is required for an SUV of this kind on something wholly unexceptional. The defining lines flow outwards from the spindle-shaped front grille, uh, making it pretty significant that this key stylistic element has been completely reworked for this revised model, so that its front-end aesthetics are more closely aligned with those of the brand's larger RX SUV. Uh, it's built around a series of uh, more overt horizontal bars that now extend right down into the grille's lower edge, with those below the central pinch point here um, placed more widely apart to emphasise width and to add a bit of visual strength to the styling. Now that's further aided by these more deeply recessed and angled lateral air intakes. Uh, the bonnet's been reshaped too, plus the headlamps feature extra tech and as before they come in full LED form on plusher models like this one. 
On all variants, these lamps sit above tick-shaped daytime running light strips that also twinkle with high-tech LEDs. From the side, you can better appreciate the way that the powerfully flared front and rear wings are fused to the diamond-shaped body. The Lexus wanted the NX to look as if it had been carved from a solid nugget of metal, and you can certainly see that effect as your gaze takes in the profile silhouette. Um, take the door detailing down near these sills that looks as if it's been precision milled by machine. It's almost sharp enough to cut you. Uh, we also love the convergence of swage lines by the rear C-pillar there and the upwardly slanting lower crease that separates wheel arches that are filled across the range by uh, various restyled 18-inch rims. Now, the whole effect might not be quite as extreme as we saw on the LFNX concept car that in 2013 originally inspired this model, but to us, chief exterior designer Nobuyuki Tomatsu's penmanship still looks fresh, edgy and different. It's thoughtful too. Uh, the artful disguise and the way the driver's front door handle conceals its key barrel is a particularly neat touch. Now, it's true that the end result of all this aesthetic excess has proved difficult for Lexus to finesse aerodynamically, hence the need for this lipped rear spoiler to preserve a halfway reasonable 0.32 CD drag factor. Still, we think the effort's been worth it. This NX is certainly going to stand out in a car park full of German metal. Uh, changes here at the back are limited to restyled LED taillights and a more dynamically detailed lower diffuser. Otherwise, it's as you were, uh, which means that, as before, uh, the NX appears at first glance to be smaller than it really is, thanks to the artful chamfering that you'll find on each of the corners. Now, the bodywork actually sits on the chassis of Toyota's properly mid-sized RAV4 SUV. But if nobody told you that, you quite possibly look at it and think that this Lexus competed with Audi Q3s, Mercedes GLAs and BMW X1s from the next class down. Still, no matter. If you like this car, you'll think its shape is worth a long, lingering glance every time you walk away for the night. All this being the case, it would have been particularly disappointing if on the inside, Lexus had served up something more conventional. Fortunately, they haven't done. Take a seat here and the shape of the dash in front of you is a world away from the simple planes that you'll find in, say, a Range Rover Evoque. And it's certainly far removed from the kind of BMW or Audi cockpit which would have flowing natural shapes. Here instead, the look and feel is more deliberately modern with sharp angles and bold slashes of wood and metal. It's all evidence of Lexus's growing confidence as a car maker. True, there is a lot of design going on here and some of it can seem a bit fussy in places. Overall, though, we reckon it works, sometimes against the odds. Lexus clearly doesn't hold with the current fashion for decluttered dashboards, and there's no way that an analogue clock should sit amongst all these high-tech buttons and LED readouts without looking anything but bizarre. Even so, the NX pulls it off. Um, the major change with this revised model is the replacement of the previous 7-inch centre dash infotainment screen with the much classier looking and easier to use 10.3-inch monitor of the upgraded Lexus Premium Navigation Package, which is now standard across the range. Now this still doesn't feature touchscreen technology, but it is a much better showcase for the usual navigation, uh, Bluetooth phone and informational features. Plus, this time around, uh, there's a better quality DAB audio system with at least 10 speakers and Lexus's Miracast smartphone mirroring system, although that only works with the Miralink setup, so it's only compatible with Android phones. As Apple users, we find that a bit frustrating, uh, which is also the right word to use for the rather fiddly remote touch interface touchpad, which you'll have to use to work this main monitor screen if, like us, you fail to get to grips with this Lexus system's voice control activation. Now, the designers claim to have improved this setup's touchpad by making the surface larger and by reprofiling the palm rest just behind it, but it still requires quite a subtle touch and it can be maddening to use, particularly on a bumpy road. Now, we know that Luxus doesn't want to copy the German brands, but in this case, uh, a different take on the kind of rotary dial arrangement used by uh, rival BMW iDrive and Audi MMI systems would have been much more appropriate. 
Another area of interior design that needs work is that for the ventilation controls that sit around this larger analogue clock high up on the centre stack. Uh, Lexus says that in this revised model it has rationalised this area of switchgear functionality by adding in these four toggle controls below the climate readouts. Now that may be, but what we've ended up with is simply a mass of very small fiddly silver buttons that are difficult to operate without taking your eyes off the road. There are no issues though with the high and commanding driving position and that is embellished by soft leather knee pads on the side of this prominent centre console. From here through this lovely grippy leather stitched three spoke multifunction steering wheel you view a clearly defined set of virtual dials and those are separated by a centrally positioned 4.2 inch TFT colour multi information display. Uh, the left hand gauge uh, displays either an eco monitor or a red tinged rev counter and that depends on your selected setting from this silver rotary drive mode select controller down here by the gear stick. Look about and there's great all-round visibility aided by large mirrors which help to compensate for the fact that you can't quite see the corners of the car when you're manoeuvring. Uh, now annoyingly for a car of this price, parking sensors cost extra on the volume entry of a model, although you do get a reversing camera as standard across the range. Plus on this top variant there's one of the very best 360 degree surround view camera systems we've tried, a setup that takes you on a little visual trip around the car and then displays displays it from above. Cabin practicality is a mixed bag too. Uh, the door pockets are small and there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses, but you do get a large glove box and a decently deep lidded storage box between the seats, which incorporates two USB ports, an aux in socket and a 12 volt point. Uh, plus on plusher models, this wireless phone charging tray too. Uh, behind the uh, palm rest for the infotainment system's touchpad, if you pull out this neat vanity mirror, there's room for oddments underneath. Uh, in addition, as you'd expect, there are also cup holders by the gear stick, fashioned with that typical Lexus attention to detail, courtesy of a high friction lining, which is supposed to let you open a twist cap bottle one-handed. Now, I just know that I would fire coke all over the cabin if I tried that, but it is a nice idea in principle. Time to take a seat in the rear where there's more space than the exterior dimensions lead you to expect. Knee room is especially good by class standards and although there's not a great deal of cabin width, what you do get is embellished by the fact that the NX does without the kind of uh, high centre transmission tunnel that features on most of its rivals. So although this centre part of the rear bench isn't very comfortable, it is easier to transport three adults in this car than would normally be the case with models in this segment. A headroom is not bad either, although it can be compromised a little if you opt for a model fitted with a panoramic glass roof. These rear seats also recline, which makes uh, longer journeys in the back far more relaxing. Uh, centre armrest features uh, pop-up cop holders, uh, the seat backs have deep pockets, uh, the doors have proper bottle holders and you get these two centre vents. Unfortunately though, as with many rivals, the USB ports or 12 volt sockets that tech savvy youngsters will want for their multimedia devices are missing. Still, it's all beautifully put together, especially in this top variant which features classy stitched leather and door cards with these lovely Shimamoku wood inlays. Out back, uh, plusher models get this, well, arthritically slow powered tailgate that rises to reveal a 475 litre luggage capacity. Uh, thanks to the need to house the hybrid system's batteries under this rather high floor, that's a little less than some rivals offer, although it is substantially bigger than you'll get in a rival Range Rover Evoque. In other markets, 555 litres is provided, but here Lexus has chosen, almost uniquely in its segment, to offer a space saver spare wheel as standard, rather than one of those irritating tyre inflation devices. So, good on them. Even so, just above the spare uh, underneath this boot floor there are some useful compartments that'll keep valuables out of the sight of prying eyes. Width-wise the main cargo bay is a good square size and there's enough room for four golf bags to be stowed sideways rather than across the diagonal. Uh, there are irritations though, you don't get a 12 volt socket back here or even bag hooks and there's no 40-20-40 rear seat split or ski hatch option so it won't be possible to push long items like skis through into the cabin uh, without disturbing a couple of rear seated passengers. Even more frustratingly you can't operate the 60-40 split rear backrest from the 
the tailgate area. It's necessary to go round to the side of the car and use levers on the seat bases. Um, push everything forward and there's a slight slope to the loading floor, but uh, there is plenty of usable space with up to 1,520 litres of fresh air on offer. If you're familiar with the way that premium badged mid-sized SUV models are priced in the current market, then the asking figures for this NX won't cause too many surprises. Lexus has pitched it into the 35 to 45,000 pound bracket where most cars of this kind are sold and has now structured its proposition completely around its petrol electric hybrid power plant. That's still only offered in non-plug-in form and it's mated of course to automatic transmission. At the foot of the lineup lies an entry level front driven version but most potential buyers will want to find an extra thousand pounds to get themselves the e4 all-wheel drive system which is mandatory further up the range Onto the value proposition all of that represents. Uh, now, though under the skin this car shares much with the hybrid Toyota RAV4, it is, as we've just suggested, positioned well above mainstream badged mid-sized SUVs of that kind, aiming to appeal to the kind of buyer more likely to consider posher, more stylized models in this class. Even here, it's hard to compare anything precisely against an NX because it remains the only conventional hybrid contender in the segment. In fact, in fact, in real terms, for most customers, it'll be the sole premium mid-sized SUV hybrid they'll have a chance to consider because the only other part electrified crossovers on offer, plug-in petrol electric models from uh, Volvo and Mercedes, are exorbitantly priced at way over £50,000. Likely NX customers have to therefore pitch this Lexus against more conventional diesel automatic alternatives with similar outputs. Like, uh, well, what? Uh, well, we think potential buyers of this car shopping for a mid-range model might also be looking at 2.0-litre diesel versions of the BMW X3 and X4, or maybe the Mercedes GLC or GLC Coupe. Plus, there are the 2.0-litre diesel versions of Audi's Q5 and Jaguar's F-Pace to consider. In all those cases, though, realistically, you'll be getting up towards £40,000 before you can have yourself a car kitted out with a reasonable spec, which makes the Lexus proposition uh, around 36000 gets you an NX SE four-wheel drive variant featuring most of what you'd want, potentially quite tempting. Of course, there are models from other premium brands in this class that can match that. Arguably, the closest rival you could put up against this Lexus is a similarly priced Range Rover Evoque TD4, but we would additionally highly recommend the Volvo XC60 in D4 form, which, like that Solihull model, also retails at, or in the case of some variants, slightly below NX money. In theory, another premium mid-sized SUV, Alfa Romeo Stelvio, also competes in NX territory, and again, in base diesel form, it does sell for similar money. That car, though, will, we think, appeal to a slightly different kind of buyer. If having considered all of this, you conclude it is a Lexus NX that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous the Japanese maker has been when it comes to the standard equipment, and that is traditionally a brand strong point. Well, you shouldn't be disappointed. Even the entry-level SE versions get features like 18-inch alloy wheels, bi-LED headlamps with LED daytime running lights, um, LED tail lamps, roof rails, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, scrolling sequential turn indicators, a space over spare wheel and an alarm. Inside there's expected kit like dual zone climate control and a multifunction leather stitch steering wheel but there's also features that you'd probably have to pay extra for on most rivals like heated eight-way power adjustable front seats, electric steering column adjustment, a reversing camera and power folding mirrors. There's also the kind of driving setting system now common in this class, the NX's drive mode select setup, allowing you to tweak steering feel, throttle response and gear change timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Uh, the modes for this are shown on the much bigger 10.3 inch center dash infotainment screen, which represents one of the key upgrades made to this revised model. Now this display is primarily there to deliver the many and varied functions of the Lexus premium navigation system, which 
which all an experience now get. This works with the brand's remote touch interface and as well as sat nav, it includes a 10 speaker DAB plus audio system, uh, a DVD player, the brand's mirror cast smartphone mirroring system, uh, the usual Bluetooth phone connectivity and various media connectivity Lexus connected services. That's the starting point in the range. Is it worth going beyond this and getting one of the even plusher luxury F Sport or Premier trim levels? Well, that's debatable. Uh, the key feature at luxury level is leather upholstery, plus you also get keyless entry, uh, rear privacy glass, adaptive LED front fog lights, all-round parking sensors, and an auto-dimming rearview mirror. Uh, the standard version of the F Sport trim grade adds to this with full LED headlamps, a powered tailgate, uh, aluminium pedals, two-tone 18-inch F Sport wheels, a smartphone wireless charging tray, uh, performance dampers, and a package of interior and exterior F-Sport trimming features. Lexus restricts the real niceties though to its two premier spec models. If you're prepared to pay a £4,000 premium over the cost of the standard F-Sport variant, you can get yourself an F-Sport with premier pack derivative. Now for us, uh, the primary reason for going for that particular pricey version is that it offers the only way that as an NX bar you can get the AVS Adaptive Variable Suspension System which makes so much difference to the ride of this car. Now annoyingly, AVS isn't even optional elsewhere in the range and the NX is a car that really needs it. Other features included on an F Sport with Premier Pack model include two of our favourite top-end items available on this car, the 360-degree all-round camera setup and the thumping 14-speaker Mark Levinson premium audio system. Uh, there's also steering wheel heating, a head-up display, a classier Naguri-style aluminium trim and some extra electronic safety elements that we'll cover off in a minute. Now at the very top of the range, there's the ritziest Premier trim level that we're trying here. Now unfortunately this flagship derivative does without that AVS adaptive damping system, but it does get all the other most significant F-Sport with Premier pack features that we just mentioned, uh, along with cooled ventilated front seats with lumbar support and extended 10-way power adjustment. And the Lexus brand's most exclusive Shimamoku wood inlays fitted around the cabin. Enough with the standard stuff, what about options? Well, unlike its German rivals, Lexus isn't keen on giving its buyers pages and pages of extra cost boxes to tick, which does make life a lot simpler. If you go for the entry-level SE trim, you'll probably want to pay extra for metallic paint and for the parking pack that gives you all-round parking sensors. Uh, from luxury level upwards, you'll have the option to add in a panoramic sunroof and a convenience pack, which gives you uh, a powered tailgate and a wireless smartphone charger. Now, if you can't stretch to sporty F-Sport trim, you can give your NX most of that variant's look and feel by adding in an optional style pack. Bear in mind, though, that you can't have this package if you specify the optional detachable tow hitch. Across the range, uh, a protection pack guards against knocks and scrapes. As for practicalities, well, you can add to the luggage area with a cargo net and a trunk divider. Plus, there's a trunk net that extends vertically up to the roof that those carrying pets will want. Uh, side mouldings, a rear bumper protection plate and protective film for the door handles can also be ordered. As can chrome garnish strips for the flanks of the car and for the bottom of the tailgate. And of course, there are the usual roof racks and carriers for things like roof boxes and bicycles. On to safety stuff. Now, one of the key changes made to this revised NX model lies in the fact that all variants now get the package of cutting edge, camera driven electronic safety features, including the brand's Lexus Safety System Plus package. And this includes six key elements. Uh, as you'd expect in this day and age, one of those is an autonomous braking system. Now, Lexus calls it a pre collision system. And it's one of those that uh, scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential collision hazards. Uh, if one's detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, this setup is also able to specifically identify people, and it will apply braking if a pedestrian is detected in front of your NX at speeds of between 19 and 50 miles an hour. 
The other five Lexus Safety System Plus features can be quickly covered. Uh, lane Keeping Assist warns dozy drivers who've drifted out of their lanes on the highway and provides gentle steering assistance to guide them back to where the car ought to be. Uh, sway Warning sounds an alert and displays a warning if uh, steering input, lane positioning and vehicle sway suggest driver fatigue. Um, automatic High Beam automatically dips your headlights for you at night. Adaptive Cruise control, well that will automatically keep you a safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. And traffic sign recognition, that pictures road signs on the move and displays them on the dash. As for more conventional safety kit fitted to all NX models, well, pretty much everything you'd expect is present and correct. So you can tick off a pedestrian-friendly bonnet, Isofix child seat fastenings, uh, anti-whiplash head restraints, an emergency brake signal for panic stops, and no fewer than eight airbags. So uh, as well as the usual twin front, side, and curtain bags, these include a driver's knee bag, and more unusually, a front passenger cushion airbag. As a result, the experts at Europe NCAP awarded this NX a top five star rating for both in-car and pedestrian safety. In the four elements of the test program, this Lexus scored 82% for both adult and child occupant protection and 69% for pedestrian protection. What else? Well, across the range, you'll also find a tyre pressure monitoring system and hill start assist control to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. In addition, there are all the usual electronic driving aids for braking, traction and stability, uh, systems that in most other cars will only activate at the last minute if the situation demands it. In an NX, though, it's all done a bit more cleverly. The so-called Lexus Vehicle Dynamics Integration Management Setup um, coordinates everything together and takes action to correct the car just that little bit earlier. At the top of the NX range on F Sport with Premier Pack and Premier Variants, Lexus also offers two further camera-driven safety features. A blind spot monitor works on the move to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another car. And a rear cross traffic alert system will warn you of an approaching vehicle when you're reversing out of a parking space. Lexus executives must have been rubbing their hands over the last couple of years as the media backlash against diesel power got into full swing. This being the same media that a decade ago told us to fuel from the black pump because we'd put out lower levels of CO2. It's a bit like when the world discovered that tobacco was bad for you back in the late 70s. At the time, uh, there were plenty of naysayers playing down the medical findings and it took society, well, two further decades to get even close to kicking the habit, as will undoubtedly be the case when it comes to uh, our dependency on diesel fuel. But if you have kicked that habit and you happen to be in the market for a premium mid-sized SUV, then this NX model's hybrid focus may well charm you. And your accountant. At current revenue rates, if you're a 40% taxpayer, running an NX300H will save you nearly £90 a month over what you'd have to find with equivalent automatic four-wheel drive two-litre diesel versions of key rivals like BMW X3 and Audi's Q5. And over £100 a month over a comparable Volvo XC60. And that will add up. Wouldn't this Lexus be even further ahead of its rivals if it offered its hybrid powertrain in the currently fashionable plug-in form? The sort of thing that you can find on flagship versions of the rival Volvo XC60 and Mercedes GLC. Well, in theory, yes, but in practice, that question is somewhat irrelevant. Uh, the models I just mentioned cost over £50,000, and adding this technology into an NX would make it similarly pricey and therefore irrelevant to the majority of buyers in this segment. In any case, according to Lexus anyway, the majority of plug-in hybrid car buyers choose them for tax purposes and hardly ever bother to plug them in. Lexus says that the modular structure of its hybrid synergy drive system will easily allow conversion into plug-in form if required, but the brand sees no reason to take that step yet. You can see why when you take a look at the stats. Uh, whatever NX variant you choose, its CO2 figure will be rated at 121 grams per kilometre. 
To give you some perspective on that figure, equivalent automatic four-wheel drive, four-cylinder diesel versions of key rivals like BMW X3, uh, Audi's Q5, the Range Rover Evoque, and the Mercedes GLC all hover in the 130 to 135 grams per kilometer bracket. And a comparable XC60 D4 four-wheel drive Geartronic model puts out a relatively smoky 144 grams per kilometer. Now it's easier to understand those lower benefiting kind taxation rates, isn't it? Vehicle excise duty is relatively low too. Uh, you're looking at £110 annually, and that's good going for an SUV of this size. If you're familiar with the Lexus brand, you'll probably already know that this car uses a full hybrid system. That's one that can allow the electric motor to operate independently of the petrol engine. Uh, now, thanks to this, the car is often able to revert into an all-electric drive format, and you can even force your NX to operate that way by pressing this EV button down here near the gear stick. Now, the EV function is only available for just over a mile, and it won't work at all if you exceed 30 miles an hour or if for some reason uh, the batteries aren't charged up. To begin with, you may find these limitations somewhat frustrating, but in practice, when the drivetrain is being used normally, this Lexus only uses its EV allocation in very small chunks, between which the battery resource is constantly being replenished by brake energy regeneration. As a result, uh, when you're in a built-up area and stop-start traffic, you'll find that uh, once the car's properly warmed up, the engine will nearly always be ready to uh, function in silent, all-electric milk load mode. When it comes to combined cycle fuel consumption, uh, the NX merely matches the diesel SUV competitors as we mentioned earlier, uh, recording 55.4 mpg uh, in four-wheel drive form or 54.3 mpg in the case of the uh, minority interest entry-level front-wheel drive model. But of course, it'll still be cheaper to run in that regard too because you'll be filling it up with cheaper green pump fuel. There's a strong environmental argument to make too, given that an NX300H emits NOx emissions that are way down on what you'd be smoking out at the wheel of a diesel. As you'd expect to get the full benefit of the potential efficiency of this Lexus, uh, you've got to do your part as a driver, and that means proactive use of the various modes and systems provided. Uh, now, to get anywhere near the figures being quoted, you're going to need to keep your car locked into the drive mode select system's eco mode, and now that moderates uh, throttle response and engine power output while also tweaking the climate control. Plus, you'll also need to keep a very careful eye on the hybrid system gauge, which replaces the usual rev counter on the dash, making sure the needle stays as often as possible in either of the uh, blue eco or charge zones. You'll find the main elements of this readout replicated by one of the options available from the head-up display if your NX happens to be fitted with that feature. Those in a frugal frame of mind will also want to keep an eye on the various graphical screens provided by the Facia's large 10.3-inch Lexus media display colour monitor. Uh, there are two, one badged history and the other trip info. The first shows your recent fuel consumption, while the other builds on that with information on regenerated energy, uh, your operating range and your current fuel consumption. Another option on this screen is the useful energy monitor, there to show at a glance at any time what's being charged or being driven by what. The graphics for this are provided in simpler form as one of the selectable settings supplied by the uh, central instrument binnacle display. What else? Uh, well, it's annoying that Lexus doesn't copy the five-year warranty that parent company Toyota offers with the same technology. So on an NX, you get the same kind of three-year, 60,000-mile deal offered by German rivals. Fortunately, reliability surveys suggest that you'll almost certainly never have to use it. You'll want to know about depreciation, of course. As ever, the NX fares pretty competitively here. Independent experts predict that after three years and 60,000 miles, your NX is likely to be worth around 47% of what you originally paid for it. It's just another area where rivals struggle to keep up, actually. Insurance groupings start to group 27E for the base front drive model, uh, rise to group 28E for the volume SE four-wheel drive variant. Uh, the luxury and F Sport variants are rated at group 29E, and this top premier derivative attracts the group 30E rating.
And finally, let's cover the maintenance implications of running an NX300H, which might turn out to be a clinching factor for those considering this Lexus hybrid against a comparable diesel rival. Now, there's nothing particularly unusual about the servicing regime. Uh, garage visits uh, uh, for all NX models are required once a year or over 15,000 miles, whichever comes first. Necessary work alternates between intermediate and full services. At 60,000 and 100,000 miles, your NX will need a bit more attention uh, with so-called full plus 60 and full plus 100 checks. What's more noteworthy, though, is the fact that these garage visits should cost you significantly less than would be the case with a diesel rival. That's thanks to the uh, low maintenance requirements that are built into the hybrid Synergy Drive system. As part of this, there's no starter motor or alternator to go wrong. Uh, there's no drive belts to break. There's a maintenance-free timing chain. There's no particulate filter to get clogged up with diesel fumes. And of course, thanks to the CVT Auto gearbox, there's no clutch either. The hybrid setup has a good record for minimizing tire wear and its battery will last the life of the car. Plus the regenerative braking setup helps to extend the life of the brake pads. Over 60,000 miles of driving the front pads should only need replacing once while the rear pads and all the discs will probably last the full distance. What else? Um, are you worried about the complexity of the hybrid system? Well, don't be. There are over 8 million Toyota engineered hybrids reliably pounding global roads. And the facts are that hybrid technology generates fewer warranty claims than conventional petrol or diesel engines do. Anyway, the hybrid system gets its own five-year warranty and you can choose to further extend this every year in the first decade of ownership with no limits on total mileage. There's also a 12-year anti-corrosion and perforation warranty and a 3-year paintwork and surface rust warranty. Lexus needs the NX and it needs it to do well. For that to happen, this car has to offer more than the traditional attributes that spring to mind when you think of this brand. Things like reliability, quality, refinement, technology and great dealer backup. Of course, the company is proud of the reputation it's built on those virtues, but it's well aware that for this model to succeed against well-established rivals like those from Range Rover, BMW, Volvo, Mercedes and Audi, worthiness isn't enough. Lexus needs desirability. It needs design flair. It needs excitement. It needs an X factor. Spend time with this enhanced NX and increasingly you'll find yourself agreeing that that is just what's on offer here. That might not necessarily mean you'll want one. It's obviously not intended for the few who regularly want to get their tyres muddy in this segment, and nor will it really suit uh, family-minded driving enthusiasts. That's despite its rather over-firm suspension setup. Now, this hasn't been improved much in this revised model, and that wouldn't be so much of a problem if Lexus was prepared to offer its AVS, the Adaptive Variable Suspension System, as an affordable option on mainstream models. Unfortunately, it seems that that isn't possible either. Plus, there is still the issue of the way that the CVT Auto gearbox flares loudly without much extra forward motion under hard acceleration. Still, the payoff comes with the much lower running costs that you'll get from a sophisticated hybrid drivetrain that really shines in the city. Others have criticised the fact that this setup doesn't incorporate the latest plug-in technology, but if competitors are any guide, that would make this car prohibitively expensive. As it is, Lexus has been able to retain a price point for this model that still makes it a very credible alternative to that diesel-powered mid-sized premium SUV that you might otherwise have been considering. Provided the engine suits and you can afford the premium pricing, most of the rest of the NX buying proposition will almost certainly rest on your reaction to this car's distinctive looks. If your favoured model choice in this segment is something squarer and more sensible, like an Audi Q5 or a BMW X3, you might find an NX a bit in your face. If, on the other hand, you like bold design and you don't mind standing out a bit on the school run, it'll probably suit you perfectly. It feels special and different, just like a Lexus should. If you fit that buying demographic, then you'll probably like it very much. 
So there you have it. The NX may still be a little too individual to sell in the kind of numbers its maker would like, uh, but then that's all part of its appeal. It's not perfect, but it's never boring. And in a market sector that's getting just that little bit stale, it's a breath of fresh air.